Welcome to the Enso Real Paradigm Shifters podcast. This show is for and about the entrepreneurs who work to improve and expand our human well-being by bringing cutting-edge technologies and ideas to light. We are Marie and Magnus Dahlgren, your hosts. This time on Enso Real Paradigm Shifters, we talk to Robert J. Janetsko. Robert is an authority on non-toxic buildings and healthy indoor ecosystems, visionary leader, futurist, and businessman. And now, here's our conversation with Robert Janetsko. Robert, I have read, to be honest, on your social media profile, such a description of yourself. Authority of non-toxic building healthy indoor ecosystems, visionary leader, futurist, and businessman. That's, uh, of course... uh accurate because it's on my Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing, nothing wrong about that. So um, that's a good, good introduction, I think. I, I was uh, born and raised in Berlin, actually, in Germany. Oh. So this was 1980. And uh, okay. <laughs> in the 80s, a lot of interesting things happened, like Chernobyl went boom and uh oh, i know this for sure <laughs> yeah yeah and then a big wall came down yeah. in uh well in 1989 if i'm not wrong yeah. yes you're not wrong yeah. okay. Yes. okay so just, one i'm sorry robert just a point for our listeners that marie lived in a town that was just a few hours from chernobyl yeah in ukraine yeah in ukraine so yeah i'm sorry okay. you, you were saying about the wall in 89 yeah, so one year prior, before the wall came down, uh, my family, my parents moved back to Finland. So that's funny, they both actually fin- Finns, but they met in Berlin and huh. stayed there for 20 years. And in that process, I was, I was born <laughs> at some point. Okay. So um, I'm starting from there because when I was born, I was born with severe asthma. And a lot of allergies, so um, it's probably no co- no coincidence that I got involved in the hel- uh, healthy indoor uh, business mm-hmm. as as soon as I I was like eighteen nineteen. So, ah. yeah, that's interesting because I was born with the similar issues. So okay. I know how it feels like, and yes, I understand. And, and I have allergies, uh, particularly mold. I'm allergic to that. If, if a building has mold, I start sneezing right away. And uh, so I have not asthma necessarily, but I, I can sympathize. Could you tell us a little bit more about this healthy indoor ecosystems? What is it and how it works? Okay, yeah. Um, a healthy indoor ecosystem is a is a concept that I came up with. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's say it's two or three years ago. So I put all of my accumulated knowledge and what I have learned in the business of uh, purifying indoors or indoor spaces, and came up with this one concept that makes it easier for people to uh, understand what what the indoor air is all about. It's very difficult to understand because, first of all, we can't see air. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just sort of, it's, it's just there. We never think about, we don't have to think about breathing at all because this happens automatically. automatically. But it is one of the key elements or probably the most important key element that uh, uh, allows us to stay alive. I mean, try to to hold your breath and let's see <laughs> how many <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also food and uh, water are of course important, but you can go with, uh, without it for days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, the healthy indoor ecosystem is, is a concept that I have explained on, on video, for example. So, it explains what five key elements make up your indoor air. Um, mm-hmm. And it starts from uh, the, the uh, immediate environment going 
to the structure itself. So what materials are being used in, mm -hmm. in building a house, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and then it goes inward, what materials are used inside the house, like carpeting and, mm -hmm. and the walls and so on, furniture and so on. And then we go into machinery, what, what kind of machinery is in there, are there many electronic equipments, this has an, a, a huge effect. And lastly, it's daily habits and, uh, you know, very, very small choices that we make that have a potentially huge effect on the indoor air. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's basically it. And Robert, I, again, I have read uh, that uh, you founded Healthy Indoor Ecosystem Academy. Yeah. So what is this institution or your venture is all about? So this is a sort of a uh, spin-off of, of the company itself. The company itself focuses on uh, bringing new technology to the market, mm -hmm. how to measure in, uh, indoor air. And the academy side would be me lecturing about it and let's say having speaking engagements and so mm -hmm. on. So you educate your customers, your clients, basically. Yeah, this is this is totally education-based marketing, because, mm -hmm. like I said, it's very, very difficult to understand air mm -hmm. in normal circumstances. And if it's so difficult to understand, it's not the easy task, yes, to educate people for for them to get to know this new concept of ecosystem or their indoor living. Why are you doing this? Why it's so important for you? Well, I, I noticed that, well, uh, I probably understand the subject better than most of people. And um, I've been doing it for a long time, like 20 years in the same business. And uh, it's sort of my responsibility to to let people know <laughs> what it's all about. So, can, I, yeah. can I just return to, to the air for a moment? Is, is your focus mainly on the air and the respiratory effects that it has, or are there other factors that you consider, like the form and shape and, and uh, sort of the, the mental effect that some spaces have on, on a person? Um, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. I don't know if you can yeah. see the, the, the Feng Shui, and I, I don't know if that's your focus, but I, I'm just curious if that is part of this ecosystem that you're talking about, because air is one factor, but then I notice you have an office, you have light coming from your right, it appears, and, and light behind, and I, I love light, we, we have windows all over the place, so that's it's nice to live here, but uh, I'd like to hear your point on, on this. Okay, this doesn't directly go into Feng Shui, which, which would be the art of arranging spaces, if I'm correct. Okay. Um, so I can't comment too much on, on Feng Shui. I like it. I, I'm very interested about it, but what, what uh, uh, indoor ecosystems are about <clears throat> is very small particles which are essentially um, fields that interact with each other. So okay. it, it actually, it goes into quantum mechanics. Oh, that's very interesting. Can we know a little bit more in details about this? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go to quantum mechanics. Okay, okay. So um, the way I understand a building is, I don't look at it like, in, in the traditional sense at all. Although I love architecture and I like beautiful things and so on. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I see it pretty much in a way on how, how is this building going to fare the next 100 or 200 years? So let's start asking questions. So skip forward and most buildings uh, wouldn't be there even if nobody would use them, they would just crumble. And the reason why this happens is that so many materials are used, tens of thousands actually, in, in one building, that are 
out of balance with each other. So oh. what, happens, what happens is actually they, they uh, implode, buildings implode. And in the process, especially in the first decade or two, um, there are a lot of wic victims from this implosion because every material has emanations. Yeah. Emanations of uh, energy fields rubbing against each other and then certain particles are born. And mm -hmm. normally these are out of balance and um, also have an effect, a negative effect mostly on, on human beings. I, I think one of the most famous is radon from lightweight concrete, but uh, do you have any examples of other particles or fields or energies that, that, that we're talking about here? Well, these, these fields could be measured in, in, for example, in length of light and you, you could, and they, some of these lengths uh, appear to disrupt the communication between our cells, for example. So it's, it's very difficult to pinpoint a certain material because um, like I said, tens of thousands of materials are used in one structure alone. Sure. So, so it's a mishmash of, of fields in there. And um, this, this implosion is slowly happening, but nobody sees it because uh, human lifespan is, of course, it's like 80, 80 years, 90 years tops. But if you take a, uh, let's, say, let's take the pyramids, for example. They're just there, okay, for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And if you go deeper into the reason why, you would find different waves or wavelengths of, of light, different emanations. So some materials are just stable as hell, whereas other, especially those that we come up with in a rapid pace, they're, they're not stable. They're very unstable. They might look stable, but they're not. Okay. When, when so you say I, wavelengths yeah. of light, uh, you're not necessarily talking about visible light. It could be anywhere, no, no, not, on, the, any, anywhere on the electromagnetic spectrum. That <laughs> exactly. We, we, we see like uh, not, not even 1% of, of uh, the spectrum mm -hmm. of light. Okay. I don't remember the, the number exactly, but it's, it's, it's nothing. It's our, our, our eyes are very poor. Could you please explain how these fields interact with the human body? Yeah, so uh, you mentioned uh, radon, right? Right. That's a good example. Um, so what, what radon does, for example, it is classified as a cancer-causing substance, a mm -hmm. carcinogen. And why is it a carcinogen is because it, 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 it interrupts the wavelength that our cells use for communication and how it actually works. If we breathe it in or if we are in a field where radon is, is present, then it just uh, throws us, us out of balance. It's, it throws our cells out of balance. They don't communicate correctly. So being in such a space all the time would, of course, have uh, health effects. Mm -hmm. you, might, you might experience some effects quite quickly, or it might take a decade. So that's the problem with, with uh, these fields. And um, also a problem is that we come up with new materials, like all the time. And uh, they are tested poorly I would say okay. and just from one side <laughs> just from one side like uh, from uh, from a technical point of view yeah normally yeah yeah and do so. these fields have name because I know there are for instance according to the Ripper Sheldrake there are morphogenetic fields there are magnetic fields what are these fields do they have name 
And, and how, how would you go about measuring them? Well, actually, what our company does, we, we have a certain invention we are wanting to bring to the market, which potentially could solve this in, in, a, in a beautiful, like fantastic way. But I can't go too much into that yet because of patents and, and right. so on. Okay. Um, and what goes to the names of these fields, it's, it's a huge area that is not studied yet. So, but so is quantum mechanics. That is new. That's the new territory we should go into, I think. Okay. And uh, if I can return to my question, are there any upsides? You say there are problematic uh, energy fields. Are there any energy fields that would have a benefit? Let's say you use more natural materials. I, I, I don't know. That, I mean, that's... Yes, yes, they are. Uh, let's say they are, there are harmful and there are neutral and then there are beneficial materials. And okay. you can measure them in diff different ways. One way alone is this uh, wavelength, what I was talking about, because actually a, a, sci a German scientist in the 70s found out that the human DNA um, contains photons. Hmm. So one, one, molecule, uh, one molecule of human DNA should contain around 1,000 uh, units of photons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's one, one way of measuring uh, is some material good or bad if, if it interrupts this flow of, uh, of photons in the cells, then it's, of course, bad. If it does nothing, it's neutral mm -hmm. and so on. Robert, and could you give us examples of bad, good and neutral materials? Okay, so I could give you an example of, of good materials would be, for example, cork. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And nowadays you can, you can um, use cork for interior decorating, you can, can use it for floors and even on the outside for isolation. And this seems to be, according to what I have read and studied, uh, a very neutral substance. And you can get it in all shapes and forms and colors even uh, without adding any harmful uh, side effects. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And, uh, and um, of course, bad. <laughs> well, I, I got this book where there are uh, like 1,400 different different commonly used materials and they are all bad. Great. <laughs> Good news. So, so mostly we use bad stuff and um, this is in, in paint. There might be two to three carcinogens and five uh, neurotoxins. This is very normal. Um, also in isolation material, there, there could be, you know, 90 different substances to it and and five of them cause cancer and so on it makes me feel and think that we are very strong beings human beings and uh, does this somehow correlate with longevity of uh, human life that is a very interesting question and th this is also the problem so first of all the human being is the most sophisticated piece of equipment on the planet. Okay, yeah. this is maybe a, a strange way of putting it. But let's, let's take an iPhone, okay? We call it technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If an iPhone doesn't have all the updates and if the, if the battery is not full, fully charged and if there's bad reception, it doesn't work at all. Yeah. A human being, a human being, yeah, <laughs> exactly. A human being can function almost, almost fully, even in a very bad environment yeah. and for a very long time. Yeah. And it is very hard to, to detect if something is wrong or not. So, so we can take 
almost anything. We can take punishment <laughs> like <laughs> like no other being. Yeah. Let's let's go back to Chernobyl. Actually, actually, so some people stayed in the village. Yeah. And and developed a resistance against uh, <laughs> against ra radioactivity, and, and there some of them are alive today. Seem to have no problem. Have have they had any offspring though? Have they had had any children in that environment? Yes, yes. Some people really stayed. It was ah, I'm not going anywhere. I, this is yes, my village. It's, we've, we've, it's crazy. We've heard, we've heard stories about large super wolves in the area. Are these children uh, <laughs> affected? Not in the same way necessarily, but have they had? Uh, if the, if the parents are resistant to the radioactive uh, radiation, the, the radiation yeah. had the children been noticed to have any differences, any genetic, not defects necessarily? But well, this is, this is almost one year ago when I, I, I came in contact with this. Uh, I can't remember it clearly, but all I can remember is that people actually used, it, used to live there and they had offspring and they're basically fine. Yeah. And nobody knows how how this can be, okay. but like, like <laughs> back to your question, it's uh, it's amazing what human beings can can really take. Yeah. Um, but of course, putting a human being from a bad environment suddenly into a wonderful environment mm -hmm. would have a very positive effect, and if they were doing okay before they would uh, absolutely thrive right. mm -hmm. like just like that now would they thrive because they can put the good environment into context and therefore see the good environment as better so do they have to experience the bad environment before they can appreciate the good environment <laughs> <laughs> that that's a very good question um uh for example, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not yeah. saying we treat people badly. I'm just <laughs> wondering. <laughs> that goes that goes very very deeply into epigenetics, actually, and there are also, also two schools for that. Uh, I personally like the one that Dr. Bruce Lipton is talking about, yeah. where he says exactly that. It it comes down to how you perceive the environment. That's mm -hmm. that's a very large okay. uh, com component. But of course, if we put a human into into a very bad environment, then most would not be okay. So you yeah. said about epigenetics. You based your research and your inventions on this knowledge. Yes, yes, definitely. It has to do with with epigenetics and and how how the cells communicate and um, with this notion that that the, the cell, the human cell, takes its cues from its environment. Yes. And you can, you can of course, um, guide the, the overall process with your mind saying, okay, this is, I accept this environment and so on. But still, the optimal thing would be that the environment is, is actually... Yeah. beneficial and healthy and that your mind is positive then then we could live up to why not a hundred and hundred ten years That's great. Doing, doing fine yeah wow actually uh, recently we had a guest and he was doing a research for five years in epigenetics and how virtual reality can affect our genes mm. so mm. that's very ah, interesting yeah. yes fascinating like I get it. That's good. <laughs> okay. Robert, and I have another question. You said previously that you feel like it's your responsibility to do what you're doing currently. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know when this decision was made. Is there a time in your life, the point, the moment in your life when you decided that's it and I'm going for it. That's my goal. That's a, that's a very good question. Um, I think when I started in in the area of uh, indoor air, it was a bit of both. I mean, I was young, eighteen, nineteen, mm -hmm. and what, how do you think in that age? It's it's like, hey, I can make money here, <sighs> right? I, I wasn't 
I wasn't like the savior of the world mm -hmm. uh, at that that point. Yeah. So so I may I, I built a thriving business and also like I wrote you I also made a lot of mistakes and uh, I lost that initial business. But the change came later. Like I said, two or three years ago, I came up with this new concept because mm -hmm. I, really, I really felt the need to push out everything that I, that I understand about indoors. And I wanted to be of service. And I didn't know where it's going to lead. I just pushed it out there. And now it's a concept that I, I normally could teach in, let's say, 45 minutes, in 90 minutes. Everybody knows what yeah. what indoors are about and um, that point came I, I don't know why but it just one day it, it just came and I, I remember coming actually to this office space and I stayed here for 28 hours and just I wrote all the walls filled with uh, with notes and I pushed it all together thinking I want to have it on paper, what I've been doing for so long. And mm -hmm. that's, that that's, is how, how it came to be. Great. Yeah. Um, could I ask you about your mission? What is your mission? My mission is to uh, help other people uh, understand their environment in such a way that they have the power to do something about it. So my mm -hmm. mission is about empowerment. Of people. And why yeah. it's so important for you again? What is um, important for you? Well, it's, it's maybe it's uh, just that I personally hate a situation where I am stripped of of uh, the possibility to decide. I mean, I, I, I just can't live with the thought that mm -hmm. there's, something, there's something that is true and somebody's not telling me, so I couldn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, Interesting. Very, very egoistic, my, my mission. <laughs> <laughs> but you're sharing the egoism, so we all benefit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, could you share with us what drives you to keep going because I'm more than sure like all of us we have moments of uh, frustration moments when we doubt ourselves or people around us a lot of people ask me that especially when I experienced some some downs more than ups and it's it's funny the more resistance I had from from the outside world the the calmer I, I felt so and now nowadays I'm I'm just how would I say it I have I have some sort of connection with let's call it my higher higher self higher being I'm I'm not religious mm -hmm. but I have this inner inner feeling that uh, this is what I should do and uh, this is of, of service to others and uh, I'd like to see this place, I mean this planet Earth, uh, go towards a, a civilization that is worth visiting from other planets. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> We're putting out the welcome mat for the visitors. <laughs> can, you yeah, us, yeah. can you please tell us a little bit more about your path, about your story? How did you achieve this connection with your higher self or higher being? You said that's very interesting because a lot of people are not a lot of. Well, I I will I will say a lot of because I would like to hope that a lot of people are doing this. At least they are searching or. They somehow interested in this, and I think it's very important to share this story so they know that it's possible. It's possible, and you're, I'm sorry, you're 37, 38 right now. 38, yeah. And it's amazing that at this, this age already, you know, you found yourself, you found this connection, you found your mission, 
so it's self-realization basically and that you have this power and will to proceed and to go so please share this story how did you do this how did you achieve this in action okay uh that's a good question first of all i'm not better than you okay i'm not special yeah because when we are born to this earth we are perfect perfect in every way so what happened to me if you can call it happening i just i just remembered who i really am and um, between the ages of of uh, when well when when you when you stop being a child and going towards being an adult you are forced into some categories this is the way how society works and the sooner you realize it's all bullshit the sooner you can take off that that mask or those masks because there are many 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 layers that are mm -hmm. not they're not really who we are mm -hmm. yeah, so it took me quite a bit of time to take off these layers mm -hmm. and when you dig deep enough then all that remains is is you and then circumstances don't matter right because you're you're just connected and you're just alive and uh, there's there's this inner faith that that guides you all the time yeah that's great do you meditate or maybe you have other daily routine practices that you would want to share with our listeners mm -hmm. yeah gladly um at one point i started meditating this was nine years ago mm -hmm. uh, nowadays okay let's let's put it this way when people say meditate they usually mean a a time they put aside it's like 10 minutes 20 minutes and if somebody's really good in meditation they sit still for an hour <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking meditating now. <laughs> so, and the rest twenty, <laughs> the rest of twenty three hours is is uh, the usual crap and and uh, problems and so on. So this is not meditation. No, it, it's the other way around. Um, Tony Robbins used something like priming. I think that's a good word, priming. And that's what it's about. You use some time, it could be five minutes or 10 minutes, it could be 15 seconds. If you learn how to do it, it could be one second and you're primed. And the rest of the day is the meditation. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's how it works, yes. Not, not, not yeah, that you're so sitting still for an entire day, but <laughs> you're... you're that's <laughs> That's just sitting still. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's just sitting still. <laughs> so because, because being a human, uh, it means being in contact with other humans, right? right. So together we are forming a colony of, of, of humanity. So this is the best way to see meditation. You, you prime yourself and then you go out there and then you're the best version of yourself that you could possibly be. And maybe it drops off. Okay. And it, if you can't be that, then go back and meditate. <laughs> if you're being a bad version of yourself, then go do more priming. But this is how I see, see meditation. Um, then, of course, I have had uh, I have had teachers and, and guidance to do this, uh, energy healers and uh, mm -hmm. even co a coach who, who, who helped me in this. And then sometimes we have group meditations, but they have a specific, um, specific outcome. So this is different from what I talked about previously. In group meditations, we, we have a specific uh, goal, which it would be like, for example, service to this 
this uh, area of, of people and, you know, trying to uh, raise the vibration. Okay, I see. Okay, mm -hmm. so, but it, it, I don't want to uh, mystify it, it's just... But that's uh, not mystics, okay. that's the reality. It's about quantum physics and yeah. it's reality. Yeah. yeah. I, a question for you. When you say we meditate, uh, do you mean you go to a, a group meditation somewhere else or is it within the office or what, what, who are the we in, in that context? Oh, there, there are a few of us who, who found we have the same, same goal, which would be raising our own vibration and that vibration of, of others who want, mm -hmm. want this sort of help. And sometimes we meet and okay. are in a group mm -hmm. session together, you know, that's relaxing and meditating. Yeah. Actually, that's what Tibetan monks are doing every morning. They're sitting together mm. and they, they meditate for the sake of uh, happiness and all yeah. the other yeah. good things for, for the humanity. Yes, yes. But I'm no monk. Just, I just want to and that's a very put it out there. <laughs> yes, I understand that you're not monk. And by the way, I'm talking about the monks because in my life I got uh, the chance to meet with the Tibetan monk, with Dalai Lama monk. And wow. he taught me a lot of things. And uh, one of the questions I asked him, how, how it's possible for me to stay active in my professional life, to be a mom, to be a, a wife, to be, I don't know, business lady and still do these things. So you're just an example how people can combine all this, be successful in business and still meditate and think about the, the humanity. These things are, don't yeah. um, exclude each other. It's all that, about that, being whole. I, I understand the premise of, of what you just said, but to me it sounds so funny because it's because of putting your own energy in in order that other things happen yeah. not the other way around it's not first i build this business and i'm gonna work 10 years and then can meditate finally can meditate it's, it doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work i tried i tried and then it it doesn't work <laughs> great yeah okay. And could you share with us what are your goals for the next five years in your business life and maybe personal too? Okay, um, in the next five years, um, I don't I don't believe in five year plans too okay. much. Um, it usually, let's say there's two there's two options. Either the five year plan works, right? All right. Or it didn't. Or it didn't work. Yeah. If it if it worked then there is a 100% chance that you could have actually reached double, or triple or 10 times what you put on paper. And then you have wasted five years because you boxed yourself in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, if it doesn't work, well, it do, then it doesn't work. And then you're maybe frustrated because you think the five last years were a mistake. Really? So, so, <laughs> and to be honest, maybe I'm going to be dead tomorrow. Who knows? So I'm more of a guy who picks a, a very direct, uh, you know, line, a direction to, to go to. The direction for me is more important than the fact where I'm at in five years. And so what... I, and what, are, what is this direction for you today? What, what are you heading to? That direction for me is to daily focus as much of, of the light or, or what, what I truly represent into this life on earth. So every day I want to be a little bit better in this. And how that translates into life is, of course, that in this business, I maybe then came up with an idea I would have previously never have had, mm -hmm. or maybe in, in the other business, um, 
I found a solution to this technical issue because I put my energy in order first. Then all of these wonderful things happen. So it's, it's very weird for me to box myself in, in, in this five year window. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> it's very interesting. We're both, one has questions, but go ahead. You're telling us now about the energy, to put your own energy first in order and all the other things, good things will follow. I have a question. Do you feel other people energies in a sense? Yes. Yeah. How, how do you feel this? What's the process for you? Do you see this? Do you hear? Do you feel? Do you have some feeling in your body in certain place? Interesting question. First of all, we all do have so-called vibes. Most of us don't listen to them, but that's what it's about. When you start listening to the vibes, you actually you just get better and better and better and then you, it's more refined and um, in my experience it varies from person to person how how they feel or how they um, translate these vibes yeah. for me it's actually seeing people um, I, I, I'm many times I see past lives from from people that I meet Mm -hmm. And it sounds absolutely crazy and I might be locked away somewhere saying this out, yeah, out it's, loud. <laughs> it's absolutely okay because, uh, because you're now in the environment of like-minded people and I sure. went through all this, not all, but similar experience. So I can understand you again. Feel what are you saying? I promised myself that always when this happens, um, and I seem not to control it. I tell people, mm -hmm. okay, so fair enough. And I always, I always tell them, hey, here's something to consider. You might have been this and this person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to 100%, when I have done this, something life changing came came about. So oh, interesting. So yeah. I will let you know if something like this happens. Good. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> so <clears throat> what is uh, almost not at all done right now is, is the study of combinations of, of materials. Mm -hmm. And um, what we collectively should have is not a book that lists all, all hazardous <laughs> materials, but a list of 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 combinations that are are beneficial yes would be nice. depending depending on the type of of structure you want to build you should know okay putting this and this and this together works and uh, it, we are in the very beginning of of a, uh, a revolution in in the building industry because all over the world we have a lot of problems which which are named uh, you know it has different names particle matter problem or then we just talk about bad indoor air and people don't know this but the air in general is is actually getting bad by having structures that have bad materials in them because they release certain gases also mm -hmm into the atmosphere so it's it's a huge problem this is one of the biggest problems we have today in the world the way we build but before that we have to solve the problem of how we think about construction how we think about living in a house so that's why i think it's so important for me to succeed to get get this new technology out there and can you please tell us a little bit more how we should think about living in our environment so as you know, our show is about paradigm shifters people who mm. test and uh, explore new paradigms okay so, so very sim very simply if you have to have a gas mask on when you're building this, the structure <laughs> it's probably not good <laughs> do you think so <laughs> get out <Yeah. laughs> if you if people 
people build structures like this. Oh yeah, it's, it's super hazardous when we put it on, but when it's in the wall, it should be fine. When you wait two, wait two weeks, but it's not. So <laughs> if, but if on the other hand, there's a material you could, you could eat. I mean, you don't have to eat it, but you could put it in your mouth and you wouldn't die. That, that would be a start. Yeah. You can't do this with, with concrete. You can't do this with paint. You can't do this with glues. You can't do this with, with almost anything that you have your house made, made of. Mm -hmm. right. So maybe a house made out of bamboo would be better than a concrete house. Uh, let me ask you, uh, you've, I imagine you've traveled to different places, you've lived in different places. Is, is there a place that gives you a better energy that you go into and you feel like, ah, oh, this, this is, what, what, could you describe that place or can you name it? Uh, I'm I'm pretty pretty comfortable with me all over the the world nowadays. Um, I I like Finland a lot because we have more nature than anything else. Yeah. So everywhere you go, you can you can walk in the forest. I do I, I do jog almost every morning outside in the forest. So that that's maybe one of the best moments of, of my day in general. So nature, pure nature and uh, not too many people in one space is what, I'm, what I like. Robert, could you tell us how it actually feels like to be yourself, to be you? <laughs> yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, I want to be me for a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, can I ask, uh, you said, having not too many people around is, is is something that you enjoy is it because the energy of the other people starts distracting you or what what, what happens there oh yeah yeah it's it's a proven fact that uh, every person has an electromagnetic field and a, a thought field and uh, thoughts even are, are you know translated just by being in the same room of of a lot of people and other people, everybody can do this. They can feel the vibes of, of yeah. a certain place. So when I say not, not too many people and one place is exactly this. I, I, I want to prime myself often during the day. And I have noticed that being solitary, uh, always, always, uh, works best not all the time of course i i love to go out and talk to people I, I i love to be on stage and talk about these things but you know it has to vary oh. yeah. and could you share with us the moment when you experienced failure and what have you learned from this experience yeah uh, my first company went went bankrupt in 2000 and Eight two thousand nine, and at the time it felt super painful, like very very painful. And the worst part was that it was a big company, and it took over twelve months to to actually, you know, die off. So there was money coming in, but less and less. And there were people hanging around, and they sort of had hope, but I, I just didn't want to be around anymore. I felt totally trapped totally trapped mm -hmm. so what I learned was to not not go into any any situation or create any situation that does not truly represent who you are oh. because that uh, in the process of building that company I namely I didn't make choices with my heart I, I made choices with with other other reasons. Mm -hmm. Of course, in business you need to use your mind and your head, um, of, of course. But I um, I let myself be influenced by the wrong things and the wrong people. So that is what I learned to to keep myself, you know, uh, focused on on what it is I really 
can stand behind. Mm -hmm. That's great. And what is your biggest aha moment? Could you share with us, please? My biggest aha moment that recently happened was a big one because I realized that I don't even exist, that all of my person is actually a story that could be told from many different angles, right. that all the feelings I experienced or might experience temporarily are only and purely 100% imaginary because nobody else can feel them the way okay. i feel and proof is also that i can change how i feel just like that so they are imaginary so <laughs> what happened is i sort of uh stood beside myself so there were two Dissociation. Two me's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was a painful moment on the other side because my ego was actually so cornered that it couldn't go anywhere anymore. It couldn't go into the same rhythm. It had been cheating me yeah. because, because there was a life situation that totally uh, prohibited that. And this was, for me, the greatest moment of my life until now. Uh, yeah. it, it sounds a little bit like Eckhart Tolle. Is that somebody that uh, has influenced your thinking? Definitely, I, I love to listen to, to Eckhart. Uh, every week I listen to, to him, for example. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it sounds a lot like, like what he experienced. Okay. For me, it sounds like the moment of enlightenment today honest yes. and uh, I have another question uh, about this do you feel like it's a lonely place to be definitely not no no okay. you're never you're never lonely you're maybe you are alone in some situation yes. but you're never ever lonely so when, it's the difference between being yeah. solitary and, and lonely it's... Mm -hmm. oh yes oh yes oh yes okay. I, I just want to make it clear as much as possible to our listeners when you experience this aha moment or the moment of enlightenment. In this moment, did things change around yourself or they, they are the same, but your experience of things and people and reality around you changed? Mm, since this aha moment, a lot of things have happened. Mm -hmm. Like situations and people and and setups have completely changed or some some completely imploded so if i sum it up it's like all the things that didn't serve me or the things i couldn't serve have disappeared just like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you feel like you have this access to tap into this knowledge i am not a uh, enlightened individual yet I don't I don't think so but I think I have a very good connection to to what you refer to mm -hmm. and also that has many names but it must be remembered that it can be seen from many angles so there's there's never one ultimate truth but you know angles to it yeah, yeah. Okay. that's very interesting and if if i would ask you to imagine now that you're sitting in your rocking chair and you're 80 years old and it's your birthday and your family your friends came to your house and they are preparing to celebrate you and they don't know that you can hear them but somehow you have heard what they are saying about you what are these words that they are saying about you? How do you <laughs> That's a good question. So what would these people that would come to see me when I'm 80? Yes. What would they say about me? And I couldn't hear them. You could hear them, but they don't know that you... They don't, they don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
Uh, first of all, I hope it's many grandchildren that come <laughs> come visit, <laughs> and many, many, many old friends that would be happy because I could help them along the way in so many ways. Yeah, and that they would think they couldn't repay me, but they wouldn't understand that I already got my pay just by making them happy. Mm -hmm. Could you share please with us your values? My values are um, authenticity, um, human life, which is the ultimate, um, the ultimate worth on this planet. Um, love, meaning not just romantic love, but a basic uh, understanding and honoring of every life form. Yeah. And, uh, and joy, I would say, joy. Life must be joyful every day. I agree with you, yeah. Okay, and could you tell us a little bit about your public speaking experience? I know that maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but again, I have uh, seen and I have read a little bit about you that you do this too. Could you tell us a little bit more about this? Sure. Um, I have I've spoken in, in many different countries, uh, also in, like in English and German. German is my mother tongue, actually. Mm -hmm. um, in recent years, I haven't actually done too big of uh, appearances, but I definitely would would love the opportunity to do so. And again, my question: uh, Why it's so important for you to do this to speak? Front of the big audiences. I think um, I am at this point of my life very authentic and I don't hold anything back. And I think this would um, give courage to those in the audience that up until that point have not shown the world who they really are because there's so many great people out there oh, yeah. that that are you know they they still have these layers on of society and mom and dad and and, and teachers who who put these things on them so uh i'm certainly not the greatest speaker out there there are so so many better ones but I know that I am 100% there when I speak. And I wish that this would uh, push people over the edge and give them courage. That's great. That's great. And could you please share with us, how do you think, how do you test an old paradigm? In which way, if to summarize all we were talking about today? In which way I test uh, the old paradigm. The old paradigm. Okay. Do you mean a paradigm specifically, or just everything old? Everything old, but I don't know what is this everything for you in particular. So. Okay. Okay. From your perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about the perspective of of indoor ecosystems and constructing and, and living in, in structures. So how I um, go against the old paradigm is, is very simply like this. If you put materials near you that are hazardous and toxic and give you cancer, what the hell do you think is going to happen? Okay. <laughs> That's a reasonable question. Yes. So do we as humanity 
want to be known as the dumbest race ever by poisoning ourselves in the way we we build our caves you know we spend most of our time indoors so of course it matters uh, what materials we surround ourselves with so during my lifetime i absolutely want to bust these stupid old paradigms that come directly from from the start of uh, uh, of industrialism it's all about industrialism thinking like robots thinking uh, thinking of people as cattle doesn't matter where they live you know thinking about only the numbers and you know harming the whole of humanity i i don't like this at all so i, I would like to have the right tools and the right way to wake a lot of people up and potentially even provide a technology where everybody could measure what it is they are living in how healthy is it how unhealthy is it that's great yeah. and uh, you told us about your invention what is the time frame when we can expect this invention to be on the market uh, um talking optimistically it would be one year but probably it's still gonna take two mm -hmm. to three years great yeah okay uh and where would uh people go to find out more about these things you're talking about is there a web page books lectures uh... so right now probably the best way to connect would be my facebook page mm -hmm. under under my name which is robert j janetsko um, and uh, i will provide more info when it's when it's suitable and ready okay, okay. okay. and i think the, the last question for today um, is there anything you would want to talk about but we didn't ask you maybe we didn't cover everything okay what 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 was the main reason that you decided to give me this honor and contact me for your <laughs> Are podcast you <laughs> me right now <laughs> <laughs> okay the main reason was uh actually the main reason is in the mission of uh my mission and mission of this podcast because as you i was uh, searching for my true self for a long time and this aha moment happened to me um at the age of 31 31 mm -hmm. two years i was gathering all this information and strength and courage together and uh, at the age of 33 i remember the moment aha moment that i said to myself and to my highest self that i am ready I'm ready to act and that was the turning point for me and uh, I'm all about authenticity too and uh, my mission is to gather people like-minded people like you like me like the people we talked already to together so eventually I hope this will be something like a hub for such people where they can collaborate, they can share ideas, they can come up with different projects, they can implement this project because we will we'll be from all over the places, from all over the globe. And uh, so that's my idea and that's why I ask you to be the guest here on our podcast and it's actually really honored to have you as a guest here because your information and your story is priceless actually for very, the very inspiring it's yeah. it's inspiring i don't think i've had my own aha moment yet but i admire <laughs> the people who have had their aha moments and i'm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to get to it and by one, listening and mm -hmm. and, uh, and hearing these experiences and one of the reason was also as you said to show to people that it's not like we're su super humans or mm -hmm. i'm an average person yeah 
I just made a decision to proceed with the with this research and search for myself and this aha moment eventually happened. Yeah. And that's very freeing experience. It's freedom, it's joy. Sometimes of course, yes, people there are people who don't understand you, but if you one of the reasons if you're inside your so to speak tribe, there are no limits. Yeah. Absolutely no limits, and I agree with that. And this comes from my heart to the both of you that I I really enjoyed this discussion we had. And you are both wonderful people, Thank you. Uh, Thank wonderful you, hu- wonderful human beings. Going back to my podcast name, Human Real. <laughs> yeah. So so. Uh, I'm really thankful this this happened and I would like to stay in touch and uh, I'm sure we can we can develop something even together. Yes. Okay. yes. I agree and would be nice to do this one day. Thank you yes. very much. We enjoyed this interview to this communication with you. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming on Robert. We appreciate it and we hope the audience has gotten as thank much out of it as we have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you and and thank you to all to your listeners that that tune in here and um have yourself a, a great day. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you very joyful much. joyful day. Joyful day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Joyful day. Okay. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.